A family taking me on a trip down memory lane. That's like one of those Leave the Beaver books. <laughs> <laughs> but here in the Angelo's house, there is pain and anger amidst the laughter. What if someone was saying? Well, she was her dad, but she wished she could not take home. You know, play basketball the other. Could have been there for my 16th birthday. 17-year-old Jesse Angelos and his 18-year-old brother Anthony haven't seen their father in seven years. It's nothing to do with a lack of love. Their dad is in a federal prison two states away. Is one bitter because of that? Sad? Angry? Some of all the above? Mostly sad and anger after. Sad because there's nothing I could do about it. And angry that they shouldn't have done it. Today marks a bitter anniversary, 11 years to the day since their father, Weldon Angelos, was sent to prison for 55 years. His crime? Carrying a gun and selling 24 ounces of pot. What do you think of the law that sent your brother away for 55 years? I, I don't think it makes any sense. It's like pennies worth of marijuana. How could somebody be doing life for that? Since Congress created mandatory minimum sentences for drug-related crimes in the 1980s, the federal prison population has quadrupled in size, from 58,000 prisoners to more than 210,000. Many, like Weldon Angelos, are serving decades or more for nonviolent offenses. Salt Lake City, 2002. Weldon Angelos was a 22-year-old aspiring music producer, father of two young boys. He founded his own recording company, eventually collaborating with big names like Snoop Dogg. But Angelos also got involved with selling pop. The police caught wind of three stings, buying about $1,000 worth of marijuana from Angelos. During the deals, police say Angelos had a gun in his possession, the critical detail that made this case so extreme. The case went to federal court. Angelos was convicted. Mindless is a, is a good word. And under the law, Judge Paul Cassell was forced to do something that burdens him still. Do you ever think about him? Yeah, I do think about Angelo. I sometimes drive on the interstate by the, the prison where he's held, and... Uh, I think that wasn't the right thing to do. The system forced me to do it. Under federal mandatory minimum sentencing law, Angelos was facing 55 years for the gun and marijuana charges combined. He was a first-time offender. Mandatory minimum is a sentence that says the judge has to impose a particular minimum number of years. It ties the judge's hand. It was designed during the, the Reagan Paul Cassell has since retired from the bench to teach law, but says the Angelos case still weighs on him. The reason he agreed to speak with us about his ruling, something federal judges almost never do. If he had been a aircraft hijacker, he would have gotten 24 years in prison. If he'd been a terrorist, he would have gotten 20 years in prison. If he was a child <coughs> rapist, he would have gotten 11 years in prison. And now I'm supposed to give him a 55-year sentence? I mean, that's just not right. What does the Angelos case and others say about the minimum sentencing laws in the country? Well, I think we need to change them. Most of the time, our federal criminal justice system works well, but there are some situations where it fails. And the Angelos case is a prime example of that. Appointed to the bench by George W. Bush, Judge Cassell believes Angelos isn't the only one paying a high and unreasonable cost for these laws. Now, I thought the sentence was not only unjust to Weldon Angelos, but also unjust to the taxpayers. It cost close to $29,000 to keep one person in federal prison per year. Weldon Angelos' bill after 55 years will be $1.5 million. The price his family will pay? Untold. Just ask his sister Lisa. It's hard. I just keep telling him. I said, you know, I'm going to keep fighting. I said, we won't stop at anything. She's made good on that promise. Running petitions, filing appeals, even testifying before Congress. But Lisa knows only an order from President Obama can help set her brother free. Right now, our only hope that we have is a commutation from President Obama. In the Angelos family, there's a lot of hope in waiting around for the phone to ring, the weekly call from prison. This call is from Weldon Angelos. An inmate at a federal prison. How are you doing today? I'm doing okay. Weldon Angelos is now 35 years old. Because I never thought in my lifetime that this could actually happen, especially in America. Phone calls like these, his only link to his boys, now nearly men themselves. Everyone we've talked to, as I said, they feel like your sentence is just outrageous. The judge called it a crime. 
that you're there. How does that make you feel? Are you, is, what, do you get frustrated, angry? It's just, just difficult to understand. I, I mean, I felt my sentence was definitely unnecessary, and uh, that a 55 year sentence is not going to do anything more than a five or 10 year sentence would have done, except destroy my entire life. What parts of this experience have been hardest for you? The, the difficult is basically missing out on my son's uh, lives. I was super close to my son, so yeah. not being able to be with them as they grow just kind of hit, hits me the hardest. Say cheese. Beneath the teenage swagger, we discovered two sensitive sons, wounded souls. Just watch as they watch this old family home movie. Hey, give me a kiss. Kiss right here. Kiss right here. Uh, the sound of their father's voice both reassuring and heart-wrenching. I noticed both you guys perked up when you heard your dad's voice. Just being around them, you, you can feel their heartache, even through their laughter, and it's really been hard for them. When he teared up, you teared up. Yeah, it was really hard to see that, because I know how bad he hurts. And seeing what they have gone through by losing their father, it's just emotionally destroyed me. There are literally thousands of families in America like the Angelos tonight, mindful of a price should be paid for breaking the law, but asking, pleading, how high should that price be? For Nightline, I'm Byron Pitts in Salt Lake City, Utah. So after that story, what's your view on mandatory minimums? Go to our Facebook page and join the conversation. And coming up here on Nightline, the secret this man says he learned about our taste buds that is allowing him to make millions on pumpkin latte burgers. And later, why Kevin Costner believes he's about to hit yet another Hollywood home run.